Iranian Defense Minister Mohammad Reza Ashtiani attended the unveiling, during which the system was successfully tested by launching a long-range Sayyid B-4, Hunter B-4, missile. During the test, the upgraded radar of the Baber 373 system reportedly managed to detect a target at a range of more than 450 kilometers. It tracked the target at a distance of around 405 kilometers, before destroying it at a range of over 300 kilometers. Prior to the upgrade, the system could only detect the target at 350 kilometers, track at 260 kilometers, and engage from 200 kilometers. According to unverified reports by an awesome Twitter handle, at Pateramish the test seemed to have used HESA carrot targeting drones for the long-range Sayyid B-4 missiles to shoot down. The radar cross-section RCS, of a carrot drone is known to be 1.64 meters square, and at Pateramish reported in a Twitter thread that during the tests, the expand engagement radar used by the system was able to get a lock onto the target at a range of 376 kilometers. It was also reported that the missile's maximum altitude increased from 27 to 32 kilometers. Iran's Tasnim news agency quoted the Islamic Republic of Iran Air Defense Force IRIADF, commander, Brigadier General Alariza Sabahifard, saying that a target drone was destroyed at an altitude of 40,000 feet 12.2 kilometers. At Pateramish also claimed that if the RCS of the Kara drone and the performance of this X-band radar against it is taken as a reference for comparison with the F-35, which is an RCS of 0.0150.005 meters squares, the Baber 373 could engage the American 5th Gen stealth aircraft at around 90 kilometers. However, at Pateramish notes that these performance parameters would hold only for the missiles guided by semi-active radar homing SAR, or the seeker-aided ground guidance SAG. The SAR-SAG are a common type of missile guidance system that relies on a passive sensor of radar signals inside the nose of the missiles, which picks up the radar signals provided by an external source as it reflects off the target. Regarding frequency, stealth fighters are known to be stealthiest in X-band and S-band, and therefore experts doubt the claims made by Ad Pateramish. I would imagine X-band radar was one of the key radar threats that the F-22s and F-35s engineers had in mind when they designed both aircraft Thomas Withington, an expert on electronic warfare, radar, and military communications, told the Eurasian Times. Withington further raised some questions, saying, assuming the radar could maintain lock, could it still do this when the aircraft is using onboard and offboard countermeasures to jam the radar, following radar evading flight profiles and being targeted by anti-radar missiles? Another suggestion made by Ad Pateramish is that the Baver 373 could make use of the Russian-made 3 dvhf ESA-1-119 Lira Nibosu radar to obtain target coordinates of the F-35 aircraft and fire the Sayyid 4 b missiles in active radar homing R, mode to engage the target at a range of 250 to 300 kilometers. Experts have long contended that Russian-made VHF, very high-frequency, radars pose a significant threat to stealth or very low observable, low, targets, such as American-made F-35 aircraft. The VHF band radars typically operate between 1 and 3 meter wavelengths. Electromagnetic radiation is known to scatter from bodies smaller than their wavelength. This phenomenon is called Rayleigh scattering. 
the critics of the F-35 point out that the aircraft's nose, inlet's nozzle, and junctions between fuselage, wings, and stabs, will present as Raleigh regime scattering centers, as they are smaller than the 2-meter bend favored by Russian VHF radar designers. However, the VHF radars usually lack sufficient accuracy to guide a missile to a target, due to their relatively long wavelength. So, the Russian designers reportedly aim to provide enough accuracy in a VHF radar, to allow a missile to be flown close enough to the stealth aircraft for the active radar seeker on board the missile, to get a lock onto the target. From the operational point of view, the idea is to deploy VHF band radars in numbers sufficient to deny U.S. stealth aircraft opportunities to surprise the defenders. Asked about this, Withington said, you may get the general locale of the target. This may be enough to get a missile nearby, but the missile's radar seeker would still have the same problem of detecting a low RCS target, and would need to get quite close in. Instead, Withington said these VHF radars are more useful for providing indications of the general vicinity of low RCS targets for possible fighter interception. Furthermore, Russian designers contend that the VHF band radars usually sit well below the frequency coverage of anti-radiation missiles, such as the M88 Harm and MBDA Alarm, typically limited to L-band or S-band radars.